everybody, Huang here, and today we're going to go over the Red Hybrid deck profile for the BT7 format. Red Hybrid is one of my favorite decks going into the format. It didn't see as much representation as Blue and Yellow over in the Japanese format, but with the hits to Mega Digimon Fusion, Reinforced Memory Boost, and Ice Wall, I think Red Hybrid is going to be one of the top contenders for this format. So, without further ado, let's get started. To kick us off, we're going to start talking about Takuya. Takuya is a 3 cost tamer that states, once per turn you may place 5 cards with hybrid in their form from your trash under this tamer in any order to digivolve this card into an Emperor Greymon in your hand by paying its digivolution cost as if this was a level 5 red Digimon. And then ESS, this Digimon gets plus 2000 DP and if you have 10,000 or more DP, it gets plus 1 security attack. So Takuya is one of the uh, main proprietors as to how you get all of your security plus in the deck. It's really easy to hit 10,000 DP in the red hybrid deck, especially given the fact that he provides an additional 2,000 DP on his own. One of the interesting things you can do with Takuya is warp Digivolve into the Emperor Kramon with shoving in 5 uh, hybrids underneath the Takuya. This is a really great way to end the game. However, another really interesting interaction is you could place 5 underneath and then choose not to Digivolve into the Emperor Greymon. You just don't reveal Emperor Greymon, that's private information. If you do this, that means you could stack multiple promo Agunimons underneath Takuya, look to Digivolve into a hybrid, and then go into Ancient Greymon for very cheap. Following Takuya, we have Promo Aguni himself. Promo Aguni is a 2 cost Digivolution, but states, when attacking, the Digimon can Digivolve into an Ancient Greymon from your hand for a cost of 2, ignoring the Digivolution requirements. If you do, delete this Digimon at the end of your turn. And ESS, when Digivolving into Ancient Greymon from your hand, reduce the cost by 2. So Promo Aguni is the key to enabling all your early burst damage in most of your matchups. Being able to Digivolve into the Ancient Greymon on attack means that he will gain the security attack from his own Ancient Greymon effect, so that's a very very easy 3 damage at the start of the game because most of your level 3s you're going to digivolve over are all hybrids, being that they're all Flamemon or, you know, sometimes Gaussmon if you run it. In which case you wouldn't be able to get the additional security plus on Ancient Greymon, but I digress. One of the really cool things though is versus Yellow Hybrid, which is a very, very popular deck, a line of play that you can do is you can set up an Agunimon promo stack in your raising area and then you don't bring it out, but you keep digivolving into all the Mon, and then you, when you bring it out and then you digivolve into Ancient Greymon for only three cost because Agunimon reduces it by two, then you can swing the Ancient Greymon for five damage and then end the game right on the spot and your opponent ha will have a very very difficult time interacting with that. And now the big boss that isn't Emperor Greymon, but rather Ancient Greymon. Ancient Greymon is a 5 cost Digivolution that states your turn for each card with Greymon or Hybrid in this source, gain plus 1 security attack, and on deletion you may play 1 red level 4 or lower Digimon with Hybrid from your hand without paying its cost. So like I said, you gain a lot of security attack from your sources, the Aldamons, the Agunimons, the Flamemons, they're all contributing towards Ancient Greymon doing significant damage. If you have Flamemon in Raising, plus Agunimon, plus Burning Greymon who can Digivolve evolve over level 4s for 1, and then Aldamon, that means you will swing for a total of 5 damage and then you can end the game on a hybrid or if you run it, the Blitz Omnimon. Now, Agunimon promo does delete the Ancient Greymon stack if you were to warp Digivolve into Ancient Greymon, which then plays into the on-deletion effect, allowing you to provide a new body to replace. If you have Analog Youth, you can also extend your place because it will trigger Analog Youth. Overall, this package is very, very powerful, but do note, Understandably, this package is also very expensive, and we will be providing a deck list uh, towards the end of this video that does not use the Ancient Greymon package, but is still a relatively good list that you can use to take into tournaments, assuming uh, you still want to play Red Hybrids. Now, Red Hybrid has a lot of techs that you can tap into, because red as a color overall it can be both very aggressive as well as very control-oriented. Cards like Atomic Blaster or Fire Drake Strikes are very good examples of this control-oriented playstyle, Atomic Blaster of course being able to clear much wider boards, whereas Fire Drake Strike is better clearing tall. Fire Drake Strike in combination with, say, Aldamon, who already breaks uh, 13,000 DP very easily, will result in a clearing level 6s with just your level 5 and a Fire Drake Strike. Then you have cards like BT4 Aldamon or BT5 Omnimon that can give you additional aggression. Gaussmon is fantastic in the hybrid matchups. And then we can also see potentially uh, Red Rise Greymon from BT4, who can use its Digiburst twice if you Digivolve into Burning Greymon over a level 4. So you can get two Tamers out using the effect. And then we see multiple other colors of hybrids using the Takuya Emperor Greymon package. 
what they'll end up doing is they'll splash it in as a way to blitz and use it for lethal in order to close out the game. And we also see other decks using Atomic Inferno red base, such as Green Red Hybrid, uh, because Atomic Inferno is just such a powerful card. So red, red Hybrid is not just exclusive to Red Hybrid, it's being used in multiple colors. Now as far as your matchups go, Red Hybrid is one of the most, if not the most aggressive deck in the format, and you can easily pump out 2 to 3 security damage on every single swing, Ancient Greymon pumping out 3 to 5. Given all of this, this means your opponent has very little room to actually breathe as you'll be constantly putting a lot of pressure onto your opponent. Matchups such as Yellow, if you play it properly, uh, where you're looking to make the Ancient Greymon stack and raising, swing for 5 and then end the game immediately from not giving them any leeway to uh, try and interact with you. Uh, loop as well, so you can put a lot of pressure before they can get to their loop, and Cherubimon, assuming you don't run into Rebellimon. All three of those, which as you may notice, are much slower decks than the other decks in the format. Ancient Greymon will be able to definitely put a dent into their game plans, but Blue Hybrid and Green Hybrid, which can either keep up with you or they can stun you, may prove to be difficult. While those matchups may not necessarily be unfavorable, they definitely aren't favorable in your uh, end. I would say they're more than likely 50-50 on average. And now finally, we get to the deck list that you've all been waiting for. This is the deck list that utilizes the Ancient Greymon package. First off, we have Kapurimon. Kapurimon is our choice of Digitama because Kapurimon gives you plus 1000 DP. If you have a Tamer on your board, that Tamer does not have to be of a specific color. So even if you have Analog Youth, that will give the plus 1000 DP. Ideally, your games don't last long enough to where the fifth egg will come up, so we're going to run the four Kapurimon. Next up in our level three lineup, we play four of every single Flamemon because they are our hybrid Digimon. Being a hybrid Digimon means you can play them off of the Ancient Greymon. It will also count towards Ancient Greymon's condition. Uh, that's really important, and they all provide a lot of value into the deck. BT4 Flamemon checks top three and adds a red a Tamer or a and a hybrid Digimon, actually. It adds both. Whereas BT7 Flamemon checks for Takuya, or red, uh, Takuya, Hybrid, or Susanomon, and it grabs one of those. But its ESS is when destroyed, you may play a Takuya from your hand for free. And then BT6 Flamemon gives you Piercing if you have Hybrid or 10 Ancient Warrior. So Ancient Greymon with Piercing is very, very menacing because that means you can swing into a body, remove the body, and then still deal the damage. It also means you can play around blockers and whatnot as well, which was previously one of the issues of Ancient Greymon. All three Flamemon are very, very potent in this deck. And then you have Bokomon. Bokomon provides additional consistency boosting. Checking top 5, he does search for Ancient Greymon, uh, which none of the other cards do. Pokemon specifies he searches for 10 Ancient Warriors alongside Hybrid. He also grabs any of your Tamers as well, gives you memory back if you'd go into the Hybrid Digivolution. Pokemon in general is just a super powerful card. In our level 4 slot, we do have two Agunimon. This is just the regular vanilla Agunimon, but sometimes you just need a regular vanilla to keep extending your plays. And then we have four of the new BT7 Burning Greymon. BT7 Burning Greymon is a 3 cost over level 3, 1 cost over level 4, and if you Digivolve over a Red Tamer, it does only cost 2. And if you are to Digivolve over a Hybrid or Digivolve over a Takuya, you are able to pop a Digimon with 4000 or less DP. So pesky Digimon like Pokemon or Gaussmon or whatever it may be, Burning Greymon will be able to eliminate them. You can also stack Burning Greymon on Burning Greymon to pop multiple bodies. And then we play four promo Agunimon. This combo is one of the uh, main reasons you want to lean into Red Hybrid this format, and so that means you want to increase the consistency of seeing this combo as much as possible. Uh, given that you can't digivolve the Agunimon over a Tamer, it does make it a little less flexible, but still powerful nonetheless, because you can set it up in raising area, unlike the other hybrid Digimon where they lose a little bit of their value. Now, our only level 5 that we play is the new BT7 Aldemon, who, if you have a Tamer in your source, you're able to Digivolve into him for 1, and then if you have Tamer, he does get plus 4000 DP, and then ESS, if you have a uh, Hybrid or a 10 Ancient Warrior on top, then he is able to gain uh, the Delicate Plan style of ESS, which means cards such as Vulcan Hammer, Schwartz, Wyvern Breath, whatever it may be, uh, you just can ignore them because you have Delicate Plan set up. We only play 4 level 5s in this build because you're mainly focusing on the Ancient Greymon Warp Digivolution, so you don't have to climb as much as you think. However, of course, if you build in the Raising, then you will have to, so do keep that in mind when planning out your ratios. Now we do play for Ancient Greymon, like I said before, you need to find your Ancient Greymon and your promo Agunimon in order to open the combo. Ancient Greymon is searchable by Pokemon, but it is only searchable by Pokemon, whereas promo Agunimon is searchable by the remaining of your deck, the, aka the Flamemons. 
Ancient Greymon is also very powerful even without the promo Gunimon because if it pops you're able to keep getting those bodies out in a strong combination with Analog Youth. We play 3 Emperor Greymon. Emperor Greymon is your secondary level 6. It is the finisher in most games because it is able to swing with Blitz, so once you deal out of your opponent's security then you can swing for game on the Blitz. Not only that, but if you did evolve over the Aldabon, it is still super duper powerful because it still will inherit the Delicate Plan-like effect. It can receive a security pressure from Tai and Takuya. Even though Emperor Greymon looks like a vanilla, the Blitz is very powerful, do not underestimate it. Blocker may not be very common in this format, but that's probably because Emperor Greymon is in the format, preventing a lot of players from choosing, actively choosing to play Blocker, alongside Blue Hybrid Stun, of course. We play 4 Atomic Inferno. This card is super sacky, super duper sacky, but it's very powerful, and we want to maximize the odds we find, not only in our hand, but also in our security. 1 cost, give a Digimon plus 3000 DP, and security attack plus 1 if they are a hybrid Digimon. So this does not work with 10 Ancient Warriors, do you keep that in mind? So you will not be able to cast this on your Ancient Greymon, but you will be able to cast this on the Agunimon before it warps into the Ancient Greymon. And then ESS, when this a card is revealed in security, I said ESS, security effect rather. Uh, all of your Digimon on the following turn get plus one security attack. So if you pull from Raising or you Digivolve into it off a of Tamer, all plus one security attack. Two Atomic Blaster to give ourselves a little bit of a control option. Atomic Blaster is able to uh, delete Digimon that accumulate up to 8,000 DP. So multiple counts of Bokomon or a hybrid plus Bokomon are very nice thresholds that you're looking to pop. And it's ES uh, security effect rather, my apologies. The security effect is also not too shabby. Going into our Tamer lineup, we play 3 Tai. Memory Tamer is still very important. You can never disregard your Memory Tamers. It also gives you plus 1 security attack. So in combination with Ancient Greymon or Emperor Greymon, it's very nice. Takuya, Takuya is a hard play making Tamer. It is one of the easiest sources of security attacking DP. There's no reason not to play 4, especially when Flamon from BT7 is going to be playing it for free. And then to Analog Youth. Analog Youth not only is an extra consistency booster, it sets up your trash for the Takuya Emperor Greymon play, but also it has very strong synergy. When Ancient Greymon would pop itself off promo Goonimon effect, you can tap the Analog Youth, hatch an egg, and gain one memory. So potentially you don't even pass your turn on that combo and you can keep extending your plays. And now the deck list for it, if you cannot or choose not to purchase the Agunimon Ancient Greymon promo package, uh, what we've done instead is, for one, we have less reliance on Flamon uh, from BT6. The piercing is a little bit less relevant without the Ancient Greymon, as well as not needing uh, the hybrid level 3 as much, so we're able to fit in Gaussmon into this list, who is very potent in the hybrid matchup. You may notice we've bumped up Vanilla Aguni to 4, uh, and that's just because we want that 2 cost Digivolution and raising sometimes to cycle. Uh, it's very valuable, and 2 cost Digivolution over our Tamers is never a bad thing as well. 3 of the BT4 Burning Greymon, because Burning Greymon underneath Takuya will end up proccing the Takuya effect automatically on itself, and that is super strong. And then we do find ourselves playing the BT4 Aldamon. Uh, BT4 Aldamon is very powerful because with a hybrid underneath, it will swing for 11,000 DP, as well as the plus one security attack. If you have Takuya, that is a three damage Aldamon, and that's just super duper powerful. Uh, and then we bumped up Atomic Blaster by one because now, without having to commit eight slots, that gives us a little bit more leeway uh, to place a little bit more emphasis on the control element. So. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this deck profile will find uh, useful to a lot of you. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments. Uh, and don't forget to uh, sub if you to this channel if you haven't. And we're also should be streaming on Twitch either today or tomorrow. So look forward to that. So thank you.